Am I the a-hole for continuing to split the bills equally with my fiancé? My fiancé, 27 female, and I, 34 male, have been together for about four years. We met in college when she was a senior and I was in grad school. We moved in together after she graduated and got a job. At the time, she was making about $75,000 per year while I was making $18,000 per year. We discussed our finances before moving in together and came to the mutual agreement that we should not mix finances and split the bills equally. The rent and utilities were split in half. When it came to groceries and outings, sometimes I would pay for it and other times she picked up the bill. It wasn't exactly equal but close enough that no one kept track and complained. This also meant she built up a healthy savings and had disposable income while I was living paycheck to paycheck. But I didn't complain or even felt any resentment at all. The way I figured it, she worked hard for her degree and job so she deserved every penny. I also knew my payday would come when I graduate. My payday came sooner than expected, as during my last year in grad school, I stumbled across a long-term problem in my field and came up with a solution that I turned into a patent. The process of building a prototype, testing and patenting was very expensive, so I barely ate that year and lost about 20 pounds. I threw everything I had into it. When I got a patent pending designation, I showed my professors and one of them hooked me up with someone in the industry. They hired me a month before I graduated and licensed my patent. I've been at my job for a little over a year, and in that time, I've made seven figures in combined salary and licensing fee. We still live in the same apartment, it's in the middle of our work and right in the heart of the shopping and restaurant district. I still dress the same but I do have a nicer truck. Nothing crazy, just brand new. The rest of my money is either in investments or working on my next patent project. Which brings us to my problem. Recently, my girlfriend brought up the idea of me paying more of the rent and utilities according to a percentage of our pay. This means I would be paying almost all of everything. She said it's only fair as I make so much more. And I countered how fair is it if I'm paying for almost everything now, when we split things equally when she was making more. I pointed out our housing and lifestyle hasn't changed at all. So it's not like she's burdened by the cost of living. She keeps on arguing about equality and I argue about equality too. But apparently our definition of equality is different. Am I wrong for sticking to our original terms? Answers to common questions. I don't know how to update besides editing so here it is. 1. My girlfriend is not a terrible person. I was around 185 and dropped to 160s. Most people didn't notice that my clothes were looser. As I spent most of my time studying and working my job than working on my patent, we didn't spend that much time together. 2. I never brought up the lack of money and food because I don't complain. I ate at home with her but didn't eat anything outside. I sucked it up so it wasn't her fault. 3. Besides this disagreement, we have a good relationship and she's a good person. 4. Some DM me about patent procedure and cost. It's complicated, so do your own research. What I did was file a provisional patent application. It's not a full patent, but it protects my design so that I can show investors without worrying about them stealing my idea. When you get a provisional patent, you can legally use the patent pending terms. I filed as a micro entity which costs under $100. I'm not sure of the cost now since it's probably gone up. Once I was sure my design was marketable, I filed for a utility patent. This costs about $15,000 including attorney fees. Once again, I filed as a micro-entity. I had to borrow money from my parents and went on a diet, but it was worth it. Now for the comments. I just want to be clear. You were making 18 k a year. She was making over four times your salary. You were literally starving because you could not afford food. You lost 20 pounds while she focused on her savings and disposable income. This is not a partnership between people who love each other. Relationships change and evolve with time. Keeping finances totally separate while dating is a different matter than doing so as you get married. It's not a matter of constant keeping to an agreement made a decade ago. But caring when your partner is literally starving is a pretty consistent requirement, no matter the stage of your relationship. Not today whole simply because finances are the least of the problem in this relationship. Yeah, definitely this. And now she wants to call unfair. That is just nuts to me. Rules for the not for me. This is going to be a consistent pattern in their relationship moving forward if he capitulates. 
If they're married, I can understand sharing the burden and running the household, but they should definitely still keep the finances separate. And Opie should get a prenup before tying the knot. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. If nothing has changed in your lifestyle, I don't see why you should pay more. Sounds like before she was thriving, and now you both are, so you should both be enjoying it. Yeah, if Opie wanted to move somewhere drastically more expensive because he could afford it, then it would be the time to revisit the agreement. He was able to barely survive on less than a quarter of what she makes, so she is clearly not burdened by the present arrangement. If he could afford that, then she should be able to afford early retirement if they aren't having kids. Opie, of course, could retire next year and be totally fine, but I don't suspect he wants to. Anyway, girlfriend sounds greedy and uncaring. Not the a-hole. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not giving my wife who doesn't work more pocket money? I, male 27, can't help but feel like an a-hole about the situation. And my wife, female 23, has been calling me an a-hole the whole week. Meanwhile, our close family are taking my side and friends are split. I, for one, don't see what I can do. For context, we live in Europe. The issue is the following. My in-laws have the amount of money they give my wife each month and she wants me to make up the difference out of pocket. For it to make sense, I have to explain our finances. I am a medical resident. My pay is pitiful, frankly. But it doesn't matter because I have real estate properties and make a decent amount of passive income from rent. My wife does not work because she is still in law school and her time is full between that and taking care of our son, two-year-old. So here's the situation. 20% of my income goes straight into our savings. This I will not budge on, come hell or high water. About 40 to 60% goes into household expenses. This includes the nanny slash housekeeper, food, gas, electricity, and my wife's school expenses. The percentage varies each month, of course, but lately, due to the war, all these expenses have risen, so it's always on the higher side. The rest of the money is split between my wife and I, but not evenly, and here is why. Before we even got married, my wife had an agreement with her parents that as long as she stayed in law school and kept her grades high, she would receive minimum wage from them, so she didn't have to work and could focus on school. When we got married, I promised to give her half of what her parents gave her each month. This way, our monthly pocket change would be roughly the same. This agreement has worked for the past four years. Unfortunately, this midterms her grades dropped. They are not terrible, mind you. But her parents have high standards, so until she can get her grades back up in February, they said they'd have her monthly pay. I kept the amount I give her the same. Essentially, she receives minimum wage now. My wife has asked me to increase how much I give her to make up the difference. I refused. And I still refuse. Because my income didn't magically increase in a month. I pointed out that she had an agreement with her parents and me that her decrease in her money is a result of her actions. I upheld my side of the bargain and told her she will just have to deal with a little less personal money for a couple of months until she can get her grades back up. I'm 100% certain she can do this. She maintained this isn't fair and that as her husband, I should take care of her. She said I could just lower how much I keep to myself or raise the rent since I already rent under the market price. I told her I am not raising rent and leaving people homeless in these uncertain times and that if I give her more from my own side, I'd almost have nothing left for myself each month. I really wish I could give her more. I do, but I can't magically make more money and I think I deserve a little for myself as well. In my opinion, her receiving minimum wage without working is enough. So am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. I felt bad until I read Nanny and your wife's school expenses. Frankly, she's an adult, and she's lucky her parents and you are giving her anything. There are people out there studying, looking after children and still have to work. What does your wife need the money for if you're paying for everything else? Right? As soon as I read a title, I was ready to call him an A. The more I read, the more I was surprised by the entitlement of the wife. She basically gets a decent income only to stay in school. Most students don't. Also, Please don't say that she gets the income to be a stay-at-home mom because her toddler is only two. It is clear that she got this income even when she was childless. Moreover, she has a nanny slash housekeeper. Also, her reasoning is that you're her husband so you should pay her. And the fact she wanted to raise the rent to people that do work and are likely less wealthy. 
Sure, it's not easy studying and taking care of a child, but she has all the means to succeed. My mom graduated law school with two kids. A job, no housekeeper slash nanny in the highest grade possible. Obviously, not day whole. She is, just for even thinking that. I felt bad for the wife's full plate. Until you said nanny? And housekeeper. I don't disagree with not the a-hole. However, Opie didn't state how often the housekeeper comes. At the Ridcom, I don't think daily housekeeping is an option, so the wife likely has to clean most days. He pays for rent. Electricity, gas, food, nanny, housekeeper, and his wife's school expenses. And then gives her half the rates of minimum wage. Why should she get more of his own spending money than him if he's also paying for everything? If she has to do laundry and clean up a little clutter and get an allowance, she's getting an amazing deal. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not giving my sister 50% of my small business? I started a small business in July 2020, and about 8 months in, I hired my older sister to do some administrative work for me. She had recently had a baby and was not planning on returning to work but still needed a little money. So she asked if there was anything she could do to help the business, and I said yes. Her responsibilities included answering some emails, organizing existing spreadsheets, and reaching out to other business, which was her background though none of the reaching out lead anywhere. She clocked about 5 to 8 hours of work per week and I paid her $25 per hour. I still created a product for the client, answered follow-up emails from the client, handled the financials, and ran the social media and website. About a year in, we decided to do a rebrand. We hired someone to make a new logo and I built a new website. About five months before the launch of the rebrand, she asked if we could get something in writing. An employment contract, it also expressed an interest in owning a part of the business. I told her we could definitely get something in writing and I would think about a part ownership. Three months later, I suggested a 70-30 split, to which she disagreed. She said she was looking for a 50-50. I said I was definitely not comfortable with a 50-50 and the highest I would ever go would be 51-49. She responded with, what's the point of being part owner when your decision would still be the final say? Again, I told her I would think about it. Two weeks before the launch of the rebrand, I was talking to my husband and made a comment about having to give her 50% to keep the peace. He advised me to write down my financial contribution to the company versus hers. Obviously, the financial, let alone time commitment, was staggering. I presented her with a spreadsheet of tiers to buy into the company. 10% for free and then tiered payments all the way up to 49%. She was very angry saying that I had blindsided her, betrayed her and even went as far to say she built my business. I've apologized for not bringing it up until the week before the lunch, but she refuses to speak to me. She refuses to come to family Thanksgiving or Christmas and it's tearing my family apart. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. She was an employee. You paid her a wage to do a job. You have the financial interest in the company. If she hasn't invested her own money, why does she think she's entitled to any form of ownership interest? Oh goodness. Why in the world did you offer her 49%? This is where you let it get cloudy because she's your sister. She did hourly work for an hourly wage. I would take all of that off the table. If you want to sell her some interest in the company, go ahead. But you already got a taste of what this will be like. Exactly. Had this been anyone else asking for a share in the business? Would Opie have done this? Not day whole. And if she feels this entitled now, how will she be like if she gets a share? Opie should completely sever business ties with his sister. Edit. And if greedy and entitled sister still has access to any of the systems, email slash website accounts, back access, etc., kick her out immediately and change passwords. Secure those things before she helps herself to them or make a mess in there. You know she'll hide behind family to avoid prosecution. And if you're feeling this badly about not giving her shares that she hasn't earned, I doubt you'd file charges against her if she steals from you or ruins your business's reputation. Yep, employee share ownership is a thing some businesses do where I live. But I can tell you now that I wasn't given 50% of the shares. I purchased my shares in the same scheme every other employee can use. And it was a lot less than 50% of the shares just for turning up as just an employee not an owner or investor. Last story. 
Am I the a-hole for not continuing all of my grandmother's tradition by not paying for my cousin's college housing? My grandmother passed away this summer and in her will, I was left a small home in the college town that I live in. This house was where I, as well as my siblings and some other members of my family, lived while we pursued our degrees. My grandmother made rent equal to expenses plus a bit extra to cover regular maintenance. It was a stellar deal for college, and it holds a lot of fond memories. I feel very fortunate to have received this house and intend on continuing her legacy with space. I have told my family, there are four remaining cousins who are not college-aged yet, that I intend on continuing renting the house out at cost of family members if they chose to pursue a degree at the college where this house is located or if they choose to take a job in the area during their college-age years. Here is where the dilemma comes in. When I made this announcement, I received a call from a cousin who is currently attending a different college that is nowhere near the home I inherited. She wanted to know how much I intended on sending her for her housing when she moved off campus next fall, as my grandmother did give some money for her grandchildren who chose not to go to college where the house was. Not nearly enough to make the deal that the house was, but from my understanding, it was equal to a couple hundred dollars a month. And when I told her I was not planning on sending any money for her housing, she went off screaming that I was disgracing my grandmother's legacy and that grandma would have wanted me to fulfill the entire legacy of college housing generosity. I am not a wealthy person. I did not receive any money in the inheritance, just a house. And even that, I have had to spend a fair amount of money in repairs to get home back to the prime condition as non-family tenants had moved out during her passing, and they took advantage of the lack of supervision during the legal red tape surrounding the house. So I told her that even if I wanted to fulfill the whole legacy, I didn't have the money, and that that was it. Now I have family members calling, stating that I am now forcing their children to choose this school near the house, when everyone else got to choose. I feel guilty, but it's not like they can't go to another school. They will just have to pay for 100% of their housing. Am I the a-hole? Not the whole. You are carrying on a part of the tradition that she left to you. Period. If your grandmother wanted you to send your cousin's money, she needed to leave you a bank account of money with which to do it. After the repairs are paid off, if you are actually making money off the house, you can revisit using that money to restart that other part. But that's clearly not happening right now. Presumably, she did leave money split up between many people. But it's harder to convince a group of people to pay a little bit than to use group pressure to harass one person into paying for it all.